Hi, this is Jeff West from Oracle, and I would like to discuss a high availability feature of WebLogic with you called Service Migration, and show you a demo of how to configure it and how it works. In a WebLogic server cluster, most subsystem services are hosted homogeneously on all server instances in the cluster, allowing transparent failover from one server to another. In contrast, pinned services such as JMS-related services, the JTA Transaction Recovery Service, and user-defined singleton services are hosted on individual server instances within a cluster. For those services, the WebLogic Server Migration Framework supports failure recovery with service migration as opposed to failover. Service-level migration in WebLogic Server is the process of moving pin servers from one server to another in the cluster. Service migration is controlled by a logical migratable target which serves as a grouping of services that is hosted on only one physical server in a cluster. You can select a migratable target in place of a server or cluster when targeting certain pin services. High availability is achieved by migrating a migratable target from one clustered server to another when a problem occurs on the original server. This allows you to recover JMS messages that have been persisted by a JMS server while pinned to a managed server process transactions that were in flight in which the original server was a participant, and move user-defined singleton services from one server to another while ensuring that they are executed on only one member of the cluster at a time. There are two options for migrating services within a cluster, manual and automatic. Manual migration can be done by either using WLST or the WebLogic Admin Console. This allows users to have control over when the services get migrated and to which server they are migrated. However, this does not achieve the highest availability possible. In order to achieve a higher level of service, WebLogic offers automatic service migration. This allows you to identify candidate managed servers for pinned services and set a policy for when a service should be migrated. There are two policies available, exactly once and failure recovery. Choosing exactly once will guarantee that if at least one managed server in the cluster is running, then the service will be running. However, if your cluster has five migratable targets with an exactly once migration policy, and you choose to only start one of the managed servers, then all five of the migratable targets will be running on that one server. The second option for automatic service migration is to choose a policy of failure recovery. When using this policy, the user chooses a preferred server to which the service is first targeted. The service will only be migrated in the case of an internal error or a system crash. The service would not be migrated if the preferred server is shut down intentionally, either forcefully or gracefully. Automatic service migration relies on the cluster leasing functions within WebLogic clustering. This functionality controls which servers in a cluster host which migratable targets. There are two options for configuring cluster leasing. One stores the leasing information in a database, and the other stores the information in memory. If you are using a database to manage leasing information, you should also configure the database to be highly available. Setting the migration basis to database leasing requires that the data source for automatic migration option is set for the cluster to a valid JDBC system resource. It also implies that there is a table created on that resource that the managed servers will use for leasing, which we will cover later in the demo. Setting the migration basis to consensus leasing means that the member servers maintain leasing information in memory, which removes the requirement of having a highly available database to use for leasing. However, using consensus leasing requires that you use Node Manager to control all the servers within the cluster. Following this overview, I will walk you through the configuration for setting up automatic service migration for JMS using database leasing. I will start by configuring a cluster for database leasing and then configuring migratable services by setting user preferred and candidate services. I will also show the table structure for database leasing and discuss how to configure this. Then I will show a live demo of JMS server migration. To demonstrate this, I have created a message-driven bean that has a one-second wait time after consuming a message, and I have used deployment descriptors to ensure that there is only one bean per server. 
I will then use a client to produce messages faster than they can be consumed, which will create a backlog. I'll then kill one of the servers and watch the messages that were stored on that server be consumed on a different server. Since I am using a JDBC store for JMS persistence, I do not have to worry about migrating a JMS file store from one server to another. I will then restart server 1 and manually migrate the failed JMS server back to the original server. First, let's configure the cluster for automatic service migration. Here I will choose the candidate machines for migratable services. I will also choose the data source that's used to, for storing leasing information. Next, let's configure the migratable targets. When you configure a migratable target, you can find the settings under Environment Migratable Targets. Here I am choosing the candidate servers that can host this service. Then I will be choosing a service migration policy of failure recovery services. In order to use the database for leasing information for the cluster, you must first create a table in the database called Active. You can override the name of this table on the Cluster Migration tab. You can find the DDL for this table in the WebLogic distribution in the directory indicated here. Let's go ahead and execute the SQL to create this table. Let's go ahead and get started with the demo. On the left side of the screen, I have the log for server 1, and on the right side, I have the log for server 2. I also have the database table on the screen so we can keep track of when the service migrates from managed server 1 to managed server 2. So I'll go ahead and get started by producing a ton of messages that will not all be consumed immediately on the server. Here we can see that the number of messages waiting to be consumed on the server is 106. Now I'm going to kill server 1. So those messages, around 100 messages or so, will be migrated over to server number 2. Then we'll start uh, keeping track of the database table so we can see when the service migrates over to managed server 2. And you'll, we'll see this in the instance column. And we'll also see on the right side for server 2 when the messages seem to be out of order that the service has been migrated over. So there we go. So now we have the JMS server 1 running on managed server number 2. And we can see the messages are out of order here. So in the meantime, I've started server 1 back up. And then we'll go ahead and migrate the JMS Server 1 for Managed Server 2 back over to Managed Server 1. This is something that needs to be done manually because if you have a, an unreliable server, you don't want your servers bouncing back and forth between different uh, targets within the cluster. So now let's take a look back at the logs, and we'll see that messages are being consumed on both managed servers. And if we update the database table, we see that the managed server 1 service has been migrated back to managed server 1. So hopefully you found this valuable. We'll be posting some code examples and the scripts needed to set up the domain and run the example for this either in the comment section for this webcast or on the Oracle WebLogic channel on YouTube. Um, if there's something that you'd like to see, then please let us know. You can send us a direct message 
at WebLogic Devs or tweet a message including hashtag WebLogic and we'll be listening.